everyone, I'm Fletch and I'm here at the Harley Davidson showroom to do a test ride and review of this bike which is the Heritage 114. Now the Heritage was first introduced in about 1986. Basically it has a separate swing arm and there's a horizontal suspension below so which the wheel pivots on. But right here, right now, this soft tail is the new soft tail which encompasses a monoshock in the rear. As you can see, everything that on this particular bike right now is stuck. Let's go through uh, a little bit of what they have. Uh, come with, it comes with a windshield, it comes with two passing lights and of course the headlights which are all LED and that's the daymaker. It comes with crash bars, floorboards. This of course is the Milwaukee 8 114 cubic inch which translates to about 1,860 cc. This is a six-speed six transmission. It comes stock with lockable saddlebags, two up seats, uh, pillion pegs, uh, dual exhaust. Right here, this is the five-gallon tank, and this translates to about 18 uh, liters, which roughly gives you about 340 kilometers to a full tank. Before I take this bike on the road, uh, let's hear from a uh, heritage owner. Take it away, JP. Hey there, it's JP1970, and I just wanted to pull over here while I'm out riding my bike and do a quick little review or what I think of my 2019 Harley Davidson Heritage. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you what I think. Here, let's take a look at something. So what do I think of this thing? What do I think? of my 2019 Harley-Davidson Heritage. Let me show you what I think. Okay, I bought this thing not quite two months ago. Look how many miles I've got on it. That's almost 10,000 miles in 10 months. And three of those months, I've never, I haven't been able to ride this thing because it's been winter. So uh, if that gives you any idea, I love this bike. Uh, and uh, just before I move off, I'm just going to go through uh, a, a few things uh, on the bike. Um, basically, the controls are still the same. It's very uh, standard. Uh, you have your switch that goes through uh, the various settings over here. Um, the trip A, trip B, uh, the time, then the RPMs and so forth. You have your horn, uh, your, high, uh, your high beam and your flash and your low beam your indicators on your right hand side you have your hazard lights your ignition switch your on and off switch and of course uh, your indicator light now the one thing that stands out from this particular bike uh, that's different from the rest is that you have something right here if you can see it this is cruise control this is actually one of the bikes outside the touring range that actually has cruise control so probably later on I'll probably see if I can uh, try it on the highway and give it a uh, give it a go and that comes under the touring section of uh, what I'm talking about basically you press once as you can see it arms it then you set your speed and then you press it again and you're on cruise and then to switch it off you either hit the accelerator or you hit the button again and it switches it off right so let's go on let's go ahead with this uh, ride start up the bike okay. so this bike's uh, seating position seems to be a little different but in any case we'll talk about it in just a bit uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this out for a short run now that we're on the road I'm going to take it on the spin around the city and then after which I am going to the highway to have a good feel of what it is or what it feels like on highway and then finally uh, back to Harley Davidson so I'll be so right now I'm on the road and uh, I'll be actually so that I will be rambling and keep to a particular uh, keep to the topics at hand uh, for this review so what I'll be doing is I'll be talking about performance comfort handling 
and of course, uh, finally, the touring portion of this bike. So let's talk about performance. This is a Milwaukee 8114. I think most of the, the new soft tails now uh, are not 107s anymore, and I think uh, they only offer maybe the street bob and, and the street and the standard as uh, the 107s. But this is a 114. So when you talk about power to rate ratio, uh, I'll, I'll see if I can put the, the actual weight of the bike uh, on screen so that you can actually have a look and see for yourself. But this is 1,860 cc's. Um, so imagine, uh, as I mentioned uh, in my other review <coughs> uh, of the breakout, that most of the salon cars here are uh, between 1.6, 1.8. Uh, you've got a couple of, uh, of uh, cars like this, which is about two liters, but you know, we're only about uh, 200 less than the, than the car in front of you, but that's weighing almost a ton. And this is only about, I don't know, 200, almost 300 kg. So obviously the response is going to be much better. The, the one thing I didn't, I do notice is uh, the difference between say a, a muscle or performance bike, uh, like say the FXDR or the, the uh, Breakout, is that it is not as talky. But again, I think uh, the way it's tuned is probably to meet uh, a different requirement, right? So if, if you're looking at uh, a touring bike and you're looking at uh, something that, you know, you want to have a, a, a more easier bike uh, and a more easier ride, I would say easier bike, it's easier ride, uh, and that you will do smooth, uh, you ramp up uh, the RPMs and do smooth shifting, uh, then it will be a much more comfortable ride. Uh, I'm not saying that the breakout is not, it is. But the tendency is to go at much higher speeds, right, as opposed to, uh, say, this bike. Uh, so I would say that, yes, uh, from the get-go, there is power. Uh, you need to accelerate, even at the lower gears, no issue. Uh, I believe that um, it has enough power even on the cruise gear, the sixth gear, to be able to uh, overtake when necessary. So in terms of performance, I think this is perfect. Again, if you're looking for uh, a touring configuration, something a bit more relaxed, something that doesn't want to push you too hard or you don't want to push it too hard, or easily, right? The pro the, again, the, pro the problem with a performance bike is that uh, <clears throat> you tend to want to go faster, uh, which, you know, I think this bike elicits a more comfortable, easy-going um, stance. It is also because of the uh, less talkiness. You just want to have a nice and relaxing ride, but it doesn't mean that it doesn't have any power at all, right? So that's for performance. Let's talk about comfort. Now this bike, uh, this bike basically is um, suited up in the sense that it is for touring. Uh, you have nice forward controls with a heel shifter, and of course, nice floorboards. So your feet are plant planted, or well, feels like it's planted firmly on the ground. And... Sorry, I had to get out of the way. So it's nice and comfortable, uh, the seating position. Uh, probably a little bit, uh, when there's less traffic, I can show it to you, or when we come to a little stop. I can show it to you. Uh, to me, again, my height is roughly about 5 feet 11, almost 6 uh, in boots, probably. And if you can see here that my knees are just at the tank level. Uh, I don't feel like it's too far up. I'm not crunched up. My rider triangle is actually 
very comfortable. Next comes the seats. I think the Heritage probably has the stock, the best stock seats uh, around because when I sit on this, it feels like I'm sitting on my sundowner. It's really very plush. It's nice and soft. And uh, I, I feel really comfortable. And, and last but not least, the width, uh, because it's, it offers you uh, a real good seating position. Uh, there's a little scallop at the back that gives uh, a little uh, lumbar support. And uh, if you, and of course, since this is built uh, with a two-up seat, the, the the pillion seat is large enough to be comfortable for uh, the pillion because it's lot I think it's about 14 inches uh, to me the uh, the seat feels like a 16 inch for the rider and I think 14 inch but I'll, I'll put I'll put up the uh, the specs up so that you can see uh, as well in terms of the ride, rider triangle I like the uh, the handlebars on these uh, on this heritage. It is, uh, I believe, a Mini 8. And it's not too high up. And I'm not too far stretched out as well. In fact, uh, my feet are forward. My, my, my arms are not too far up and not too far forward. That I will actually have a, a much more comfortable feeling. Uh, riding, right? It's, it's as if I'm sitting on a uh, on a couch, and it really is uh, quite a comfortable bike. Right? As you can see, the the height level is not too bad. Um, and, and and from you can see from here, my seating position uh, is a bit more laid back. So really, it's it's a perfect cruising uh, configuration. Uh, and makes it really, really comfortable as well. Now, when it comes to handling, um, I think the, the wheel size is just about perfect. Uh, I could take corners with confidence. And I'm not sure about the lean angle. Again, I'll put up the, uh, the specs on the lean angle, but I think I, I can confidently say that I will be able to do a nice, slightly tight corner um, without hitting the floorboards or um, the exhaust, right? but not that I'm going to do that. It's not my bike. So handling is the next one, and that's what I wanted to do, talk about, and I think this is perfect, this place, because uh, there's some nice curves and I'll be taking another curve going up into uh, the highway. You know, if, if you feel that intimidated by uh, the weight of a touring bike, then I probably suggest uh, getting a heritage because then you have the, uh, the opportunity to go on a tour. Uh, taking this long distance, not going on a tour. Uh, and still feel the confidence of uh, being able to ride it, knowing that you can actually handle this bike. When we talk about touring, I think this bike has the best bang for the buck, as they say, right? It comes with passing lamps in the front, and it comes with the Daymaker. I, I think this is... Uh, a 16 inch, uh, I'm, I could be wrong, but I'll check. Uh, windshield, and of course, it also comes with uh, the luggage. To me, as, as a potential touring bike, this is perfect. I don't have to spend extra money outfitting it, of course, you know. Harley riders being Harley riders, we will definitely change stuff out to make it our own, you know, whether it's cosmetic or, or otherwise. Uh, maybe in terms of comfort, you probably might change out the seat, but you know, invariably stock would be perfect. Now, hopefully, I can 
uh, once we get back on the highway, I could actually test the cruise control. Probably what I'll do is uh, go to the, uh, well, not the slower lane, but uh, the lane that, that gives me the least amount of obstructions and I don't have to worry about not showing it off. Uh, and I think that the cruise control is probably one of the best things about uh, the heritage and what it really helps in terms of long distance, you know, you're always on the throttle over 200 kilometers, 300 kilometers before you stop. You're on the, on the handles all day. Uh, the cruise control really, really helps quite a fair bit. All right, so we're exiting into the highway right now. Okay, I've engaged it. Free, not bad. Uh, put it back because I think I had to slow down. It's a bit tough uh, with the traffic to show it off, uh, and I probably didn't get the sequence right in any case. Uh, but this is a perfect addition to uh, this bike that completes the entire touring picture of it. Well, folks, uh, that takes me to the end of this video. Uh, I do hope that uh, you enjoyed my review. Uh, please do um, leave your comments below. Let us know for the other uh, heritage owners uh, what you think of your bike and then give your comments below. Uh, once again, thank you very much for uh, watching this video. Uh, if you haven't yet done so, please click the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you know when I'll be putting out uh, the new videos. Uh, once again, thank you very much and you guys have a safe ride.